Welcome to the, I think, uh, fifth video of acid-based disturbances. And today we're just going to go and give you some practical examples of acid, uh, ABG interpretation and finding the exact underlying acid-base balance. The examples I'm going to present today, I took them from this paper, A Practical Approach to Acid-Based Disorders for Richard uh, Hubbard. I'll put the uh, link for this paper. It's free on the internet. You can download it and print it. Um, in the description, I encourage all of you to read it. It's just a few papers and gives great information. All right, let's start. All right, so we have this ABG pH 7.5, PCO2 of 20, bicarb of 15, sodium 140, chloride 103. So the first rule pH is alkalosis or alcoholic or alkalimic. So this primarily explained by, of course, lower CO2, not low bicarb, right? So mainly we're dealing with respiratory alkalosis. This is primary. The next thing we said always immediately calculate anion gap. And anion gap here is. 140 minus the sum of 15 plus 103 and this is this this is the bicarb from the serum from the bmp not from the abg so this will be 22 immediately the anion gap is increased that indicate there is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis so this is the first disturbances this is the second disorder so already we have two now before i move to the Third step, some of you say, hey, maybe this is why you're saying there is increased metabolic, uh, increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. Why this is just a compensation of respiratory alkalosis. Remember, when we explained about the anion gap, that the body does not respond to uh, respiratory alkalosis by producing acid. It responds by losing bicarb, right? So increased anion gap metabolic acidosis indicate that there is acid production, whether this is endogenous or exogenous acid. That's why it's not a compensatory mechanism. So to compensate, we lose bicarb, not produce acids. Okay, the next step, this, this is one, this is two. The next step, we said, okay, the anion gap is 22. We subtract from that the normal bicarb. Sorry, um, we subtract, we, we measure the excess anion gap. The normal anion gap is 12. So the anion gap minus normal anion gap, this equal to 10. Now 10, we said we add this to the measured bicarbs, 15, and that's equal to 25. And then we compare this to normal serum bicarb, normal serum bicarb from 22, we said to 26. So this within normal range. That means we stop here. There is no further acid-based disturbance. So this patient has a primary respiratory alkalosis along with an increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this case, such cases we see with salicylate overdose. If you remember that, that increase, it caused increased anion gap metabolic acidosis and a stimulate respiratory center causing respiratory alkalosis so see how following these rules one two three make things pretty straightforward and easy to interpret all right let's go to the next example okay so this is the second example ph 7.4 pco 240 bicarb 24 sodium 145 chloride 100 most of it looks pretty normal right so please pause the video and try to interpret it yourself and then come and finish this. So we said when we see a normal pH, I immediately jump to the anion gap. Anion gap here is sodium 145 minus bicarb 24 plus 100. So that's equal to 21. So there is increased anion gap. And we said when there is increased anion gap, especially above 20, there is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis regardless of the pH. And then we measure the excess anion gap, which is excess anion gap, which is 21 minus 12. That is what? 9. And then we say, okay, now sum the excess anion gap to the major bicarb, which is 9 plus 24. That's equal to 33. Compare this to normal bicarb. This is definitely more than expected normal bicarb, which we said the range from 22 to 26. That means there is metabolic alkalosis. Okay, so now we finish here. So there is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis along with the metabolic alkalosis. Can you guess what clinical example that could explain this? This patient has 
chronic CKD, chronic kidney disease, leading to chronic metabolic acidosis. And then he started vomiting. So this caused the acidosis. And then he started vomiting. And as you know, vomiting caused acute alkalosis, acute metabolic alkalosis. So the alkalosis, the acute alkalosis cancel the acidosis that's why the ph is normal so if you look at the a this abg just and don't think about it so oh, this looks pretty, pretty normal but when you go to systematic we figure out that there is increased anion gum metabolic acidosis and acute metabolic alkalosis that's why it always has to be systematic let's go to next example okay so this patient has a ph of 7.50 pco2 of 20 Bicarb 15, sodium 145, chloride 100. And remember the bicarb we have in these examples are coming from the serum bicarb that we get it from the dissolved CO2 with the CMP and BMP as we explained before. So this is toward the alkalemic or alkaloidic side. Okay, let's go systematic now. And what can explain it? The, the CO2 abnormality or bicarb abnormality, definitely it's primarily explained by the carbon dioxide, right? We said the it's an inverse relation between partial pressure of CO2 and pH. So this is primarily respiratory alkalosis, okay? So we figured this out. This is number one. Then number two, we jump to the anion gap. Anion gap is 45 minus 100 plus 15. That's equal to um, 30, okay? So there is... <laughs> increase anion gap metabolic acidosis and the reason we said we always when there is always anion gap especially above 20 anion gap never a compensatory mechanism we explained that that to compensate for respiratory alkalosis the body make you lose bicarb right not produce acids and that's why when you see the anion gap we'll say there is an increase anion gap metabolic acidosis the third thing we said measure excess, uh, we call excess anion gap, which is equal to 30 minus normal anion gap for this, for the sake of these examples, 12. That's what I use in our hospitals. So that means 18. And then we sum this 18 to the bicarb value we have here, plus 15, that's equal to 33, okay? 33 compared to normal bicarb, it's bigger than the normal bicarb, 22 to 26. That means there is associated metabolic alkalosis. So this patient has three disorders, primary respiratory alkalosis, increased anion gap metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. And this ABG was taken from a patient who having was alcoholic, having alcoholic ketoacidosis, who was vomiting and he was having bacterial pneumonia and that's why he was uh, vent hyperventilating causing the bacterial pneumonia caused respiratory alkalosis vomiting caused metabolic alkalosis and alcoholic ketoacidosis caused increased anion gap metabolic acidosis it's important so far for these examples that you cannot have more than three disorders metabolic acid-based disorders for respiratory you only can have one either respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis while the metabolic that's when you have uh, you can have one or two uh, metabolic acido acidosis and alkalosis can coexist so then this is a clear example and you will see um, examples that where is anion gap and non-anion gap metabolic acidosis exist all right let's move to the next example all right, so this patient has pH of 7.15, PCO2 15 millimeter Hg, bicarb 5, um, sodium 140, and chloride 110. Okay, let's go systematically. So this is, pH is low. This is acidemic or acidotic. Primary disorder explained by bicarb, of course. So this is primarily metabolic acidosis, right? This is the primary disorder and clearly the CO2, partial pressure of CO2 is trying to compensate. And this is a clear example that the body cannot fully compensate for pH. It's, it's most of the time it's partially compensating. The next thing calculate, this is number one. Next thing calculate anion gap. That means anion gap will to 140 minus 5 plus 110 and that's equal to 25 right so there is increase anion gap metabolic acidosis so we have metabolic increase anion gap metabolic acidosis so this is the first disorder let's look into the third step which is the excess anion gap which is 
25 minus normal anion gap, the calculated anion gap minus the normal anion gap 12 is equal to 13, right? Now 13 plus measured bicarb is equal to 18 and 18 is less than normal bicarb which is 22 to 26. That means there is also at the same time normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So there is the second disorder. So this patient has increased, number one, increased anion gap metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this patient is recovering from DKA. You will see that some DKA patients, their anion gap will close, but their bicarb remains low. And that's mainly a failure of regenerating bicarb from the lost keto acids in the urine. And usually that gets improved um, on its own eventually. So this shows you when you go systematically you uncover and discover all the possible disorders so please try to every time you see an abg in the hospitals try to go systematic until you get used to it and they will make it very straightforward for you will make things pretty easy for you so these are some examples on how to interpret abgs all right i'll see you next video